I'm Ian from the digitallife.com and uh, I've sort of been doing blogging for a while about sort of media centre systems and sort of when the Raspberry Pi came out for this to see how you could use it for media centre type stuff. So um, we have been using it for media centre, sort of playing back videos and things like that. It's a great sort of blog cost media player. Um, but one of the limitations with it when it first came out is there's no MPEG-2 support in the, on the Raspberry Pi commercial license. So you can play H.264 files, MP4 files, uh, but MPEG-2 wouldn't work. And DVDs use MPEG-2, so that's no so you can play <coughs> to DVDs. And um, I use Windows Media Center to record TV as a, as a DVR, and you couldn't play them on it either, so it was a bit limited. So last week, the Raspberry Pi Foundation announced that um, you could buy decoders for them. And so, They've announced uh, two decoders: the um, MPEG-2 decoder at two pound forty, and the VC1 uh, decoder at one pound twenty. So what these are is these are effectively a license, a personal license for MPEG-2 or VC1, and the Titan seal them with the Raspberry Pi. So you order it from the Raspberry Pi store, and they send you after seventy two hours, they send you a code. Or in my case, send me a code and then send me another code so, because they sent the wrong code. But anyway, so the code is tied to the serial number of your Raspberry Pi, so you've got multiple Pi's that buy the code. It's not expensive, not by any means. Um, <coughs> so then you can play MPEG-2 and you can play VC1 and make a sort of a better media centre machine. So I had, I had a play about, this was trial and error last week really, to play about to see what works and what doesn't work, because there's no published guidelines really. So. Um, Start the MPEG-2 decoder. So the MPEG-2 decoder, if you buy that, you can play uh, Windows Media Center recorded TV files. Uh, you can play DVD files. Um, the, the HD files will work as well. So if you've got a Freeview uh, HD card uh, on a PC or a Myth TV or something recording TV, you can record an H, uh, HD content, play it back on the Raspberry Pi, and use it as a, as a media player. Without the decoders, you only get the audio, so you need the decoders to get the to get the video on there. And then the other decoder that they're offering is the VC1. Um, the VC1 is the Microsoft format for video playback, so it's not really as important. Um, sort of less things use it than it used to do. So if you've got any videos made with Windows, Windows, uh, Windows Video uh, Creator, whatever it's called, and if you've got any stuff that's done on, uh, on Windows, Sometimes they come out of WMV, so you've got from a camera and you make a movie or whatever. So that's when you need the, the VC1 decoder on there. So that was the sort of the combination that uh, I found by sort of trial and error. So DVD playback works, but you've got to be on encrypted. Um, I haven't tried sort of mounting a whole DVD on there for XBMC yet, so you need to get the menu. I've just tried playing the bot files and that, that works fine. So, you've got it. so with this, you just decrypt it using something like DVD encrypt or whatever. Those tools you can play DVD. Back on there as well, so uh, the Raspberry Pi is no problem playing back the DVDs. Um, the uh, so Freeview supported. Uh, last night I actually got working at uh, HD Home on it. I've seen the HD Home on it, it's a little network TV tuner. So you plug your aerial leaf into it, and it sits on your network, you plug it into your network, and then it's a tuner, and then you can pick up that from another device. So uh, you can get light in the Raspberry Pi that way. So. If you've got one of TV in a room where you've no aerial signal, you get a HD home roll, plug it into where your TV comes into your house, wherever you've got the network, and then you can use Raspberry Pi to extend. How much? <laughs> uh, I think this HD home was about 70 quid, something like that. Uh, this you can get a dual tuner, so you can put two aerials into right. it, and you can have uh, two, two sources at once. And it comes with the drivers for, for Windows and for Linux as well, so you can uh, control it all from that. You can use um, VLC and there's a little to add sort of into VLC, but I, I don't know anybody else has got it working, but on standards, Raspbian builds, VLC is not fast enough to play back any video, whereas if you do for XBMC, you can play back. Fine. So those are just the, uh, some of the things that I found playing about. It's a, it's a nice idea if you want to build a really sense system, the Raspberry Pi system for that, it's low powered, uh, it's cheap. It's a good way of doing it. I just thought a two line display was quite interesting. You could perhaps get a you know, plane effect. That was something that was interesting on there. Um, 
So that, yeah, that's all I wanted to show off. Uh, just a shameless plug for the user group that I have in, in, uh, in September. Um, we've got a jam session on there, but we've also got the uh, Vintage Computer Museum bringing a lot of kits and spectrum and views. And they're coming up all the way from Cambridge. Yeah. With lots of kit. Lots of kit, yeah. yeah. A full van load of stuff, he said. As, well, as much as stuff as he can fit, he said. So uh, they're going to have those set up there. Um, we've got the Blackpool Miniatures Group coming to show some stuff off. And uh, we've got, well, got some old printers coming. Someone's bringing some old printers. So people are bringing stuff to show. We're not, it's no, it's no sort of talk to anything. We're just going to have big roomy tables and plug stuff in and play really for the day. So. Um, and or well, you just go to that uh, address and register. If there's something you, you think you could show off, you'd like to show off somebody, let me know. Uh, anybody that shows up does an exhibit, just can, can get in free anyway. So uh, just need to register with me. So let me know. Email address or Twitter. And uh, yeah, hopefully to see some of you there. We'll have a nice, fun day. Right, the next thing to we'll talk about um, was uh, something I thought was interesting. is why kids like the Raspberry Pi. And these are my sons, Jack and James. And uh, they like the Raspberry Pi, I that's I'm not very <laughs> And uh, I thought it would be interesting just to explain if they could sort of talk about why they like the Raspberry Pi and uh, they like the, the scratch and that kind of thing. So if you want to ask them all the questions about why they like it, so down. Do you want to explain why you like it, Jack? Um, I like the Raspberry Pi because like, um, on the spectrum you can play spectrum games and you can go on scratch and on scratch you can be really creative and create new things every day. Yeah, yeah. James has been doing some scratch problems. You want to explain to us what you what you've got there? Um, um new unicorns where you with the fly of the top it comes from the screen trying to hit a wall. And what I found with scratch is I briefly showed him this very briefly and left him to it and just sort of forgot about it. And then he said, he came up from school and said, oh, I've been showing a friend Scratch and what don't need to ask his teacher, because you can get Scratch for, for Windows and other <laughs> operating systems. He asked his teacher to install it and he's been showing his friends and now he's got sort of a little group of friends all doing programming at school club when previously they were not interested in doing the programming. <laughs> Can you explain what, what you're doing? Um, it's a person and she fly around the tree. So what he's been doing, he's been, I don't know if you've seen Scratch, but it's a, a really brilliant idea for kids where there's no coding involved, it's all dragging blocks in and connecting things up, but it's like you have to know process control because you can have little loops and things and like conditional things. Like if this unicorn touches the whatever that is supposed to be, it goes off and flies off and you they just come up with the ideas themselves. I've never really shown them anything on this, it's just sort of uh, out by themselves and it's giving them a bit of an interest in the programming, which I think uh, one of the things that sort of frustrates about what they do when they tell me about stuff they've done at school on computers, it's PowerPoint, Word and Excel. And that's all they ever do at school, they never do anything sort of fun, so I, I think I was really, this is really good and for the uh, kids who can give them a Raspberry Pi for that price and just let them get on with it and move into it and it, uh, hopefully it will generate some future interest and I can retire off the earnings that they get from being <laughs> 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 Do you want to show anything else? I think we'll Q&A then, James, explain what he's done. <laughs> <coughs> Do you want anything else? So, Ian, James, and Jack, thank you very much. <laughs>